Yes, sir. Welcome. Yes, sir. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode. Another episode. Of okay. the Sports U Podcast. The you we back. We you. always back. You already guys know that we pull up every Wednesday here uh, to give you guys an awesome episode. Episode 81 on the way we always have Steven from across from us. Stevie Thank you for joining cut. How us doing? once again, my guy. It's always great. It's always great. And then, of course, you have Rob on the mic here with Gift in your right to my left. Big grip, big gift, drip tin from his walk. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Another yep. episode, 81 of them things, baby. Welcome to the Sports You Podcast, where we read you sports news. And you listen to our stupid-ass opinions. Yeah. You! We back with the Sports You crew. We'll get into some quick hits <clears> here <throat> and kind of get uh, into them a little bit more because they are some crazy topics, honestly. And then we're going to get into the finals matchup, of course. Talk a little bit about each coach. And then, of course, uh, get into the NFL. Kyler Murray um, coming back from OTAs. Uh, we'll get more into that. You know, Gifton is a huge fan of him as well. And then we got is a little he? segment. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> hey, commitment video coming soon, y'all. Yeah, it's yeah, coming. We're going to see. It's, it's coming. coming. Uh, but but at the end there, we have a little segment for you guys. Let's get into the first quick hit. Gifton, bring us in. Fuck, you would make me read this one. <laughs> Another oh, lawsuit sorry, has been, been filed against Deshaun Watson, and there are now 23 active civil lawsuits filed against the Cleveland QB and. Fuck, man. Um, man, I oh. I don't I don't I don't know at this man. I don't know at this point no more, bro. It's it well, seemed it seemed kind of like Houston was trying to stick it to him. Now it kind of seems like something really might have happened, but it already got dismissed. So now they're all civil cases. I'm not that good in the law, but I mean, is yeah. this new one that came up? Is that like is like the instance she say like they had something go on like recent basically so what happened was apparently she she seen an episode of the hbo special i forget what it is uh but it's a show that uh is building the Browns. it's on youtube there we go oh no it's on uh, hbo max that's oh, what my she bad. said it's 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 either building the browns or it's, they have two things going well okay. i know it's from hbo max so it's hard but there's then. like some show from there and uh most likely it's exclusive it's coming from hbo but um Anyway, it gave her some strength, I guess. And with that being said, she came forward on oh, on some... Uh, and it was, like, documented, but it wasn't, like, pressed or she didn't charge anybody. Yeah. And then so... Or, or she didn't, like, press charges. Yeah. And so she watched that and inspired her to, like, press the charges on them. So now it's just another one. I think the biggest thing that's coming out of this is how much more terrible that, that uh, contract looks. There was not a good response to how things are going, and uh, innocent until proven guilty. But shit, that that type of contract and the way that they structured it too was always kind of uh, guaranteed money. It's, well, well, I mean, again, he's only getting paid like I think it's like really close, to like nine mil or something, maybe even less, like one mil, so that he doesn't lose out on all the money that he's suspended for. So it's backloaded. But ultimately, it, it's just looking worse and worse and worse for the NFL and. Um, I That's mean, twenty three. Like, you have to be guilty on. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know for sure. That's why it's going through all lawyer, those things. Yeah, but, I, but like, I'm not, I'm not it's looking. Yeah, it's looking know. worse for Deshaun, and uh, I don't know, man. I I, I can't really see him living out this contract, and the Browns are already kind of burned a couple of bridges the, there. The so. main burned a couple. The well, main, I mean, if he lives yeah. it out, he's living it out in Cleveland. The Browns. Go, like like you said, they burned some bridges too. So like, they can't <laughs> they can't backtrack this one so easily either. Yeah, like they're gonna have to live with it. That, as well. Yeah, that's true. They they're kind of forced to like stick by Deshaun Watson strong because you get like yeah. if you're gonna guarantee that's it, a hell bro, of, too. One that's well, a hell of a gamble. It's, it's the same thing with like Aaron Hernandez. Like there's a certain reason R. why R. he P. killed himself at a certain time because he would get. Uh, money for certain things and yeah it was like oh, alleged yeah. like they were able to like get that over with with court yeah. but i mean once if he gets convicted of something then he's not that's a totally different type of contract outlook right yeah and does well, that help like the trading process too like do well, people get reverse traded i don't know i guess shit, they took already that lot of, oh huh did this new oh. one press criminal charges against him or that was that's was, a civil lawsuit oh, okay yeah then like He's not gonna go to jail because, like we said, criminally it's been dismissed. So yeah, he's not 
that shouldn't be an issue. Like, it's going to be more so settlements and, like, fines, mm. all that kind of stuff now from him moving forward. Still though, but it's still going to. But gonna, it's a new one, but so it can't be. It, it can't right, go with the other ones? They'll, it'll nah, probably I, still be civil, bro. If the DA already civil, dismissed bro. it, if the DA already did their work and it was like, hey, we haven't found anything that's, like, makes this a criminal case. Yeah. Like he said, it's already it's, been dismissed, already so he's dismissed. just going to have to pay out the wazoo. But I like, think the biggest thing that, my bad, I don't mean to cut you off. No, good, I think the biggest thing that sucks about it is that, like, if he did do it, if he didn't do it, let's say he, hypothetically, he didn't do it, right? He beats all these cases. He's still yeah. going to be guilty. In, well, I in mean, the eyes yeah, of the public, he's, yeah, he's still, and that's what it, with with yeah, everybody, yeah. and like as much shit as I we be making fun of Ben Roethlisberger, yeah. no, Kobe but Bryant, real. when that shit happened, I don't make fun of that. That one happened. Anymore. That was real with what? Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, uh I don't know if because it, it got it's settled, right? Guilty, exactly. but I again, you know, I he didn't I think go, he didn't have to face charges or anything, but yeah. But yeah. Ben Roethlisberger and 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 many of these athletes, it's you know. Even even like even like like you know Michael Vick didn't have a charge like that, but you know when no, Michael Vick did yeah, the dog fighting thing, like went to jail, did his time. People still look at him people, as yeah. a, as a piece of shit. People and I mean, yeah, like, I, 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 I don't think anybody does fan, anymore for him. No, bro. it's not as far as like, some Kobe, bro. Some bro some look, no, even when he was on Everybody the Eagles, Kobe, that's he, why they, they said game. Peter was at this man games when he was still on the Eagles, bro. Like, come on, like he was at the Eagles at the end of his career, and they're. Like that's True. it. It still follows you. Some of these things still gonna follow you. It's mm-hmm. not. It's like even in the bigger eye or the like to the majority of folks, it may go away. But to the people who actually care and like are really riding for certain movements, them people are gonna still be on you. Well, my whole thing with with Michael Vick is that he signed something that said that he like confirmed in court that he was doing some crazy shit to dogs that like only like psychos do that shit and i mean Fam. comparing i mean a dog to like women and stuff different but whoa, 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 it's all bad whoa, yeah whoa, no no okay, i'm saying okay, like that's okay. that's undebatable like, women like, are way more important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like just I'm to saying, clarify i, I just I'm brought saying them up that, i'm not I'm comparing really, that, i'm not comparing them women to pit bulls just saying yeah but no i'm saying i just gotta get that, that out there that you can't compare a woman to a dog like no, at all you know what i mean no you can't so like I think this is Michael Vick already, cause digging deep into that story, man, he was doing some crazy shit. Nah, he was, yeah, he was. So he was, wow. but this one too, there, like I don't think there was a way for his to be dropped into civil. Well, case, you though. okay? Like, yeah. It's With just, all the feelings that you have, are you going to be a Deshaun Watson? Like, are you still a John, Deshaun Watson fan? I'm sure you were before this. Like, I was before this, but I mean now, I just want like. Realistically, because we've seen him not play for going on two years now, and we don't know, like, we just hear more and more reports, but we're like, is he really going to get his shot back? Like, because they're just prolonging him getting back more. I mean, rightfully so, if they feel like he needs to be held accountable, because, like, like these are serious things that's mm-hmm. being accused of him. But... If it comes out that he's not able to play anymore, but then, bro, then that's the way it has to be. But I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, let him come back because, like, it is what it is. He has, like, I like I can't defend his actions. I really can't. Mm. Yeah. I don't think I anybody can't. can. Not even his lawyers. It looks <laughs> Not uh, even his lawyers. You bro. talk to what? Bro. Oh, <laughs> <man. laughs> Fuck. It was funny. <laughs> Uh, the Utah Jazz coach Quinn Snyder's future remains unclear, and a possibility exists that he could decide to end his eight-year tenure. Um, I feel like this would have been news if Darvin Ham was already uh, attached to somebody. And, Get out of there, uh, I, I would rather go with you know Darvin Ham, a player, a former player at least with this type yeah. of crew. It feels like. Get out of there, Quinn. Quinn not being not being able to be uh, a representative for that like role. I don't well, know if this is even news anymore because where else is, can he go? It's so not it's like a big deal. I mean, it's not news. But then, like, one thing I saw, they were saying um, he could be an assistant. Like, yeah, they said he could be Darvin Ham's assistant if he if Darvin Ham accepted the that's job. A, that and then a even now, at, and even at this point now, that's probably off the table because it's looking like Darvin Ham's going to get to pick his own staff too. So, like, realistically, yeah, it sounds like he Terry Stoss, he could be an odd man out, like. I'm, I'm not. He, 
I don't know any head coaching jobs that he'll get this off season because I don't know any other ones that are still like needed. Mm. Is that Google? Hey yeah. Google, pause. <laughs> it's because yeah. we say play. Oh yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I don't I don't know any other teams that are gonna have an opening for a head coaching job, especially That's what I'm one to say. Like, on the level knows. at least the Jazz too, because if he does go to a team, it might not be a good team. At this point. Uh, I, are the Spurs a good team? They're better yeah. th- than they're, they're the right. Magic. They're not uh, better than the Jazz. Magic, <clears throat> and that might not be true next year. Yeah, if I keep seeing all these damn Donovan Mitchell trades happening, but man, I don't think uh, he, even if he don't go to New York, that that Utah shit hey, might be hey, in the trash hey, next hey, year. Let's be real, bro. Who the fuck wants to go to New York? Nah, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't understand what that. Is, real, it's let's so be many. Realistic, I saw bro. a lot of tweets. Let's be real. Them, what the fuck be, these Knicks fans are trolling bro. the hell out of getting seriously. Bro. Julius Randle and Tom we just, Thibodeau. Like, yeah, we just we ground. we saw nah even two years ago when Ra- Julius Randle was supposed to be going there. Oh my God, Julius Randle's going to the Knicks. Da 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 da. What the fuck happened these last exactly. two years? <laughs> I mean, they might need a new voice the same way hey, the Boston, listen. the same nah, way the Boston Celtics need nah. a new voice. I'm I not mean, comparing Quinn Snyder. The Knicks Snyder might to, need a new voice too, but them guys is. <clears throat> they, they can do better. The, exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah, why exactly. a, good, yeah. a good head coach yep. like him could be better than Tom Thibodeau's yelling ass the whole time. His shit gets oh, old. No, no, I don't know about Terry Stotts being better. Not than Terry Tom Stotts. Thibodeau. I'm saying Quinn Snyder. Oh yeah. No, Sam too. I don't know about that because like, bro, he eh, he's bro, like I don't know the email. Effect I don't know. Is, the email effect is real though. Well, that, well, he. I'm not gonna compare him to what that. What does that got to do with him Snyder? This. Though? The fresh voice coming into an organization and getting them far. Okay. Yeah, but, but what if his voice don't mean shit though? We don't know it that. Wouldn't. At this it point, didn't it Rudy and Donovan? Because Rudy's it's a bitch. Different. It's totally different. Right. A totally I different agree. Spot. Rudy's a bitch. I agree, but that isn't so. All right, big bitch, listen to the coach. It's He's not, a diva. Not diva's not that don't easy. listen. He really doesn't want to listen in the first place. Don't listen. You know. You he think, has a younger you squad. You think Randall's going to be easier to control than Rudy Gobert? Yes. Randall is Randall. Yes. <laughs> Randall is Randall. A, Randall is a coachable player. He just I'm gets not in saying... his head so much when he's not hitting. He's not happy in the Knicks no more, so that's That's, that's totally his different. fault. Play, laying a yeah, fucking egg. It kind of is. That's his fault. It he did it is. in the playoffs. It doesn't matter. That's why I said Julius is going to be Julius no matter where he goes. So I'm saying Julius is easier. You have to deal I, with I him would anyway. say Julius is more. But the rest of the squad is definitely coachable. Yeah, for sure. But Julius, I would say Julius is more coachable than Rudy Gobert. Yeah. Fair. Fine. Fair. I, but I wouldn't I say still that. don't think he's the guy. Snyder. He, he doesn't oh, have so to be the guy. So fuck that. Fuck that. What the hell guy. are we talking about? Well, then why are we talking about him going to the Knicks? Why do we care? He's why not the guy. Why can't Fuck he... out of here. So He don't so need a head coaching job. Wait, so is Emei the guy? He's a dude. No. Emei is Emei. for real. Snyder is not for real like that to me. He's talking about the guy. So He's one of the guys, yeah. Snyder? He's definitely a guy. No, Emei. Okay, so Emei is the guy. Quinn Snyder is not? Thank you. Yes. I mean, period. I'm asking. Like I said, and that's why I don't that like is what the I Lakers think. job is because it doesn't seem like he can control superstars and their attitudes or even the effort. That's why he way. needs to he go always to had, hold, Charlotte. Hold he always had six man of the years on his team. He had two last year, basically, with yep. Joe Ingles and Jordan Clarkson. Yeah. Two yep. six man of the years. Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, bogged down by... Like, you got a, you got a pretty nice squad, man, and I feel like you underperformed. So that's why I don't really... Low Quinn Snyder, but again, his two best players were rifting the whole time and he couldn't control it. So that's why I didn't like it for the Lakers job. The Knicks, eh, it might be a nice little restart for a lot of things. He's good at defense, and <clears throat> you have a team that it feels can like play that he can develop. It on it's the just the other ones, it kept folding. They kept folding at the end because they didn't like each other. They didn't believe in each other. It's totally different. More like they didn't believe in Rudy, but okay. I wouldn't believe in Rudy either, but I don't know. No, nah, Rudy's just overhyped. Look, I mean, thank you. Look, well, look, I, look, 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 look. I mean, we're because they didn't believe in Rudy, but why is Quinn not able to get them to buy in? When you got a dude bitching like because that, thinking he's now, that guy, I don't think it's I don't. Literally, this is the, the thing, though. But we're putting it all on Rudy, but the, but with the Nets, Steve Nash got all the blame. There was no. Yeah. There, why are we not giving Snyder between, any blame? Between because he the doesn't three, deserve between it. Between Steve Nash. 
my God. You just said he can't control superstars, yeah, and now no. he doesn't deserve blame? No, because those two guys Fuck are the main part. Fuck that. Those two guys are the main part. I said that. And, and, and it was okay. stuff that he can't control, and so literally, do you, all right. we're, we're so Already do you believe if he had two? All right. So you just said I wouldn't want him for the Laker job. So if he had huh. two new superstars, then what the hell difference would that make? Because one, if he can't control think, them, you think both those guys are superstars? Who? RJ In New York Barrett and Julius. No, Randall. I don't. But he's so, not gonna do shit with them because they're not superstars. Boys, because they're not high on a totem pole. He's like right here, and they're so, either right next to him. He's or not doing less. shit with them because they aren't superstars. I'm not saying that he's winning anything, but he's. I think that he could be a nice voice to them. Here we go. Just talking about the Knicks to talk about him because that's what this sounds like. No, Maybe he can just you bring made the a suggestion. No, I, I didn't say he should go to the Knicks, though. I, I don't believe I said that. The Knicks okay. Fairness. Well, then I, I said, said the I like Knicks. that. It sounds cool. I think it'd be nice for New York. That's what I'm be, saying. Get that nigga assistant job, bro. Ooh. Bro, that's, and that's, just, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's a hell of an assistant, though. though. Yeah, I know it is. It's a so. hell of an assistant. And but he's two, taking a step and, down. And then let's be real. They, he's they, not because no, he, I, he is taking a step down he because, is, you had, because he has to. You had, to. The, first you had the one seat. You had, you had all these things, and you're not you doing a, it. You had a better team with Mike Conley as your point guard and a great bench. And this is literally Mike Budenholzer where he was before he won the ring, bro. Because Mike yeah. Budenholzer was in yeah. a real hot seat before he yes. won the ring. They won the 1, ring. So everyone had to shut the fuck up. Yes. All he had to do was win. They were number one and got sent home by the Clippers after Kawhi's knee went out. Okay, but that's it's a little bit of a different situation because your two best stars are able to be cohesive still on the Bucks. The the, because the other guys there, and and it's not his fault about the initial thing that ruined that relationship. I hear you, but is Mike Budenholzer not also allowing them to be in these good situations too? Are they not like? That's what I'm saying. Like you can. Mike Budenholzer did a, did a well job. The, I but know. They're in two different I know. Situations, though, I that's agree. What I'm trying to say. But we're so you can't really compare them. I understand the situation is comparable. Situational, but situations are comparable because, like I'm saying, he like these guys aren't performing, but we keep we keep saying it's oh, oh because those two guys just couldn't get along. We're not putting any of that on the coach, whereas hold in up. other situations, the Jazz that's never lost not in that fashion. In the, I mean, excuse me, the Bucks never lost in that fashion in the okay. playoffs. Okay. And coming into the new year, those guys are all the top people are are vibing, and they also added a new piece, so they have a big three. So their situations are totally different. But again, it's not his fault that the initial shit happened with those players. So I'm gonna chalk it up to. Even though that happened, he wasn't able to overcome it. I'm not saying that this guy can't handle situations, but that one was not only too unattainable, but he wasn't able to attain it in the first place. Rob, you sound crazy. How? Because yeah. you're literally saying, like, you're saying things. How is this not in his control if he's the coach? Yeah, how are these guys not vibing out of his control? Bro, they tried, but... They tried what? and failed. He gave the other COVID right in the beginning, and they weren't already vibing in the... Like, you keep, he wasn't being safe. He was already concerned about it. All these things you're saying, are, they don't exactly give Snyder a pass, though. Like, Why not? Because you're, yeah, you're, not, because you're, you're still, you're not you're still the overseer of all this. <laughs> so, this still happens on your watch. All right, you yeah. see Rudy going around being a dickhead. Get his ass in line. Who cares if he cries? Put your fucking foot down. Man, I he's not think, a fucking he. He makes 180 that, mil, but he's not that guy. What I'm saying is, okay, if this is this guy, the superstar, and some really like tertiary, like fourth guy down the line type of player, then it's not going to be a big deal. If they're your two best players, and then some bullshit hey, happened like that, Shaq and Kobe totally didn't get along, bro. They they didn't get along, but they both cared about winning in a different way. Madonna Mitchell, you can see it. He don't give a fuck. After all this shit happened, he don't give a shit. He doesn't care that much anymore. Yeah, okay. And that's your best player. Here again. So back to Shaq and Kobe. Did, but was was Phil Jackson given a pass when they broke up? No. Nah, he they, won they without were, him, so they didn't care. Yeah, like six years later. No, I'm saying. I'm did saying Phil Jackson happened. was. Was Phil Jackson not given any accountability between Shaq and Kobe when they went their separate ways? You tell me. Because at the end of the day, 
he's people still felt like he didn't do enough to keep like all the finger pointing went around and it was still like you guys didn't do enough to keep him well, together. Phil Jackson still stayed there and won championships. So how does that support I, your argument? He left and came back. He did oh. leave and come back. He left and came back. Hmm. But because I, I, after Shaq left, Phil was gone a few years, but he came back. He did hmm. come back though. Well, yeah. I don't know what's happening with the yeah. with the Jazz. Okay, that was no. that was a good. Hey, we, wait till I clip the shit out of that because that's gonna be good. Anyways, <laughs> last year Victor Oladipo turned down a max extension. Uh, I think it was two years, forty five, forty four million. million. Yeah. Uh, how much do you think he'll get this summer? Mind you, he is uh, 10 points per game, shooting 36% from the field and 27% from deep. And in the playoffs... And that was all in the playoffs. Yeah, and the, Oh, my God. So how many regular season, season but, games did he even play? What's, what is probably he like, worth? Probably like 10. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like I 10. think he was offered by Indiana for four years, 112 mil. Again? Oh, the first time. The first time. Oh. And so he turned that out. Yeah, Turned that down. That's why. <laughs> Force got traded, and then uh, the they want to play there. Though. It ain't gonna get it. It ain't gonna get no better than 112. You can get traded and still get. Well, he paid was. Uh, I think he was an All NBA and All Defensive player too, yeah, and he was a number one option. I think like doing like twenty five plus a he, game. He was for them. Twenty seven yeah. or something. Was he there with the PG years? The last the last year of the PG year? No, they traded him for, for PG, PG right? Because mm-hmm. yeah. he was in Oklahoma at the time. And so, yep. uh, I think. I think I was seeing something like three years for uh, 21 or something. But, yeah, no. It, it sucks that this man lost a bag. And with all this kind of looking he's out, still outside worth looking more in, than I see him. 21, though, low key, he's, more, he's worth more than that? To who? 21. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's. He plays to well who? on defense still. He has a good IQ on yeah. that aspect, but like, he's not to, it. You're trying to get him maybe three for 30, but that's about it. Yeah, I'd probably. Three for, three for 45, too. Three for 45, that's kind of pushing it, but... <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> Thank you! But, I'm not crazy But if I, I'm, 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 I'm not calling you crazy. I'm not calling you crazy. Hold up, but if I'm, on a, if I'm on a worse team, and I want to take, like, a long shot as a <clears throat> as a shooting guard, that's a nice shooting guard to take a bet on, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. yeah a little bit more time to heal. Because what is he, 28? He's nice on the he's defensive old, side, bro. but he's not... He's 30. Is he 30? He's knocking on the door. Yeah. He's getting a little longer than the tooth. I just want to mention it because well, not only is he on the I heat, mean, but uh, yeah. he was a really okay. good if player. If he's 30, then the three years doesn't sound crazy. Then. Yeah. He was I a really – what What did Jen Schroeder – what was he about to get? He was about to get four years. He was about years, to get 80 million, bro. Nine million, and 80, he turned it Like, down. at least 84 yeah. million, bro. Four years. Like four years. Yeah. At least he didn't get hurt, but that's so this what is makes worse. that worse. No, Dennis well, yeah, is Dennis worse. Is, Dennis, Dennis is, is worse. I'm saying this one – Bro, he left the Celtics to get traded to the Rockets. It was, it was worse. No, but, wait, hold on. They hold up. traded him. He didn't leave. I'm well, saying the contract wise, though. Yeah. He turned down a four year 112. It was just like the Lakers fans that were talking about it, you know, because they, they were able to put it out hey, a little bit more. Oh, that I shit. mean, but Victor oh, no, no. I'm saying his keep it wasn't in even high, over. Uh, his wasn't even over 100. His was eight, his was it was in the 80 range. That's what I'm saying. It was this a good guy, deal, but he got he got he was supposed to get more and he turned yeah. it down. And then he's still better than. Dennis Schroeder at this point, I feel like, but yeah. I no, mean, that's a hundred million me. from yeah. Indiana versus eighty million from the Lakers. That is a little different conversation. I'm very sad for him, man. Yeah, he's on our team, and he kind of showed a little bit of heart at the end, but it just, it just wasn't enough. I'm surprised they didn't play him as much because he was really good on off on defense, on offensive side. Nobody was doing as well as him in certain aspects too, but some, everybody was kind of doing it shitty. Was a anyway. game where he was the only nigga actually kind of scoring too. In the beginning of that first game, I mean, as I like it, one of game those, five or something. The game where y'all got like it was maybe like game two or three. Yeah, like half our points at halftime. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah, he but did have like a thirty point game. <laughs> it was like game two. It was, he had a thirty. He had like and a forty a point game point. before the season, yeah. before the playoffs. Yeah. So he had it's like can, 25 it, that other can be there during yeah. the Celtics. All right, but though. real quick, though, with the next one, because we kind of don't know that much information about it. Jerry Judy no longer facing misdemeanor charges. Um, I still have no idea what he did. Okay, wait. Yeah. This, this is my whole thing about Jerry Judy is that I read about him a couple times, and I've also seen a couple interviews that are talking about how he's not mature enough to really invest into his career. And also, he's doing some shit off the field as well, apparently. 
Mm-hmm. So I was one that was picking like Jerry Judy over uh, CD Lamb. Yeah. Jerry Judy's really nice, man. Twitchy. He's got a quarterback now. Yeah. Why are you trying to mess this up? Messing up with your uh, with your money as well, honestly, because he's getting close to his contract type of years. It just sucks for uh, for him if and the Broncos if they have this so called potential this year. I don't really believe in it, but uh, it was uh, domestic violence. Yeah, and so. It sucks that this type of shit has to happen, or it's there. It is happening. I just think it sucks that even more that he has nice talent and he's not invested into it. So it takes away from the fandom, I guess you could say, on that aspect. But let's just think about him as a person. Hopefully he can get his shit together so that he can really capitalize on the opportunity he has. Yeah. I mean, yeah, for me, I don't know what really happened with this situation. Realistically... Yeah, I, I, I was putting him over CD Lamb, too, that the year they were drafted. But, I mean, at this point... I feel like I, it's still, we all were. Well, I was, too, for sure. Yeah, but, okay, even... All right, besides that, but, like, right now, he's still, like... Well, he's at a very important part of his career right now because, like we just said, they got a new quarterback. This can... Well, really, this can be the year where he puts himself in up another level. So realistically he's gonna have to capitalize on the move and make sure he shows he's out there doing what he's supposed to be doing. I mean, yeah, this shit happened, but we don't know what else is going on. Right. And so, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know all this man's whereabouts, but like we gonna know what the fuck is up when the season comes. Yeah. Here's the thing. Let's just take away the misdemeanor charges. <clears throat> fuck all that, right? Not being charged well, the They've been dropped. Yeah. Congratulations. Now so, focus. Exactly. With the other off season stuff that we're speaking about where he's not really invested, I feel like that's like the main thing to emphasize with this along with it. Hopefully they're not of course uh charges have been dropped, but at the same time, hopefully he can stay clean of that type of distraction throughout the season and focus on football. But uh let's get on to the real reason. I would do the show in the first place. Damn show in the first place. The NBA. Bitch. Bring in the first one, Gifted. Okay. Uh, is that the correct intro? Hey, no, the intro listen. is not. There. Okay, got it. So, we finally here to the last stretch of the NBA season. The finals. Mm. The, the Warriors versus the Boston Celtics in a scrappy game seven. Very close game. Like 103 to 97, I believe, uh, that they beat the Miami Heat to get to the se- to the finals. Now, uh, I think that was the score, wasn't it? It was like 100 to 97. It was a very close game. No, I just uh, I don't it's think you brought you it in right. For, yeah, you went from saying the Warriors are oh, playing the bad. Celtics, and then you set a score. Sorry, dog. My bad. I, yeah, you're right. I did. I did. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, what I wanted to get to was. The Boston Celtics are going to be playing. This is the Celtics' first time back in the play, in the finals since 2010. Yeah, 2010. Us. Damn, that's wow. Since Fuck 2010. Em. So pretty much the question I wanted to ask was, who do you have in the finals matchup? Hmm. We're finally here. Well, we didn't well, see well. Golden State go through all their trials and tribulations. We didn't see Boston battle out in in what two game sevens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two very tough fought series to finally get here. We got our first game tomorrow at six o'clock uh, Western time. Uh, let's start with you, Heat fan. How are you <laughs> feeling? Um, shit happens. Felt like everybody was counting us out, but it definitely shit wasn't Jimmy's fault. That's so, for sure. Hey, no. Boston. Uh, I felt like was a good team the whole time, but uh, it sucks that we lost Tyler here. He made a big difference. So, uh, ultimately, man. Kyle Lowry not showing up. <laughs> uh, the Celtics had just enough, more than we had enough. They had more depth than us. Uh, so And more scoring. Fuck. But with this matchup here, uh, me and Steven were talking about it. I was talking about it with a lot of people as well. Uh, to go kind of go back to that last matchup with the Heat and Celtics, both of those guys have really good defenses and can make not only each other's offenses look weak, but also make just the whole other team scrappier, you know. Uh, we were running into bodies the whole time, and it was just a really tough matchup. So, uh, 
I don't necessarily think that they'll be tired or something, but you still have two people that are <clears throat> not necessarily the best uh, when it comes to injuries or recovery right now. Uh, Robert Williams, as well as uh, Marcus Smart, at least. Oh, and then you got Tatum with that nerve damage, too. Um, really where? His shoulder. It was just happening Ooh. like throughout the series, but he was able to close out. Uh, he had a really wow. bad game and then came back to have a, a lot better game, especially in a closeout series. Man, that's so, the worst place to have nerve damage there or like your neck. Uh, well, I mean, suck. you're shooting and you're using a lot of your shoulders when you're playing I think basketball. It's just shooting side, too. I'm sure. Ooh. I, you think so? I think it's I tough. saw the tape on his right side. Um, But with that being said, so I'm speaking about the defense of the Celtics and how they made my Heat look secondary. <laughs> and just overall, they have a really good defense. Want to contribute that a lot to Ime. But and then you look on the other side. Apparently, the Warriors have been leading the league in a def, uh, uh, defensive rating throughout the whole entire league, I think. So, and that was in the regular season. So, uh, now they're playing matchups. Seems like they're deeper than the Celtics who have Derek White and Peyton Pritchard coming off the they're bench. definitely deeper without a question. You know, maybe maybe Grant Williams comes off the bench too if they start Robert Williams. But They're going to work them all in. They're not deep enough, Steve. Yeah, they're not as deep as, as the Warriors are. <laughs> And then the matchup type, it seems like... Isn't Boston Otto Porter still hurt, though? Sorry. Uh, I, I think he's coming back for the beginning of the series. Okay. Also, Gary Payton. And uh, there's another Gary Payton too. is not coming back, bro. I don't give a fuck what these reports say. He ain't even he missed said, a full month. He said. He did say he was trying to come back game one. On a fracture? Oh, we'll see what he can do. No, he was able... Fracture. I'm saying it was said that oh, he was able to come shit. out. And if it's a minor fracture, it's still technically a fracture. True. That's a nice report, but I don't believe it. We'll see what happens. I believe it when I He's see probably, it, yeah. He better not risk his health. All right, but even minus Gary Payne, yeah. you know what I mean? Even minus it's him, still, they're good. Insane. So, um, I believe it definitely will be a long series. Uh, but I also believe that the Warriors can take one at their house and just stay undefeated at their own house. If they yeah. do that, it's Warriors in six. Yeah. Um, but with this being said, you know Tatum has a has a way of bouncing back. He's averaging thirty two a night after a loss, so maybe <laughs> he could squeeze one out uh, when it comes to the home court advantage part. Mm, but maybe. I I even still leading if they take one just one at the Warriors' house, that still means that it can be a seven game series and they still have home court right, advantage. Yeah, yeah. So with that being said, it feels like it's leading the Warriors the whole time. I said the Warriors weren't gonna win one in the next four years. I I don't really want to go against that, but kind of convincing myself to go into that because if they both play the same amount of defense, I believe in the Warriors passing and like playmaking ability. Boston, they have it in a certain type of way and they have a little bit more heart. But I feel like the Warriors just been there, done that, and they have really nice stars. Klay Thompson, I haven't even mentioned this whole time, apparently he's supposed to take a no step forward to. or he's been taking a step back, but he's been so consistent. So, I'll, I'll take it all. I'll, t- I'll take it all on the Warriors side. I think the Warriors will prove uh, will prove me wrong and say that hey, we're gonna win a champion championship this year. Uh, I said in six. So, okay. uh, all right, that's fair. May I'll <laughs> say it's safe seven because Tatum scores thirty two tonight and he can win one at their house. Yeah. Okay. Safe seven. Nah, let's do six. Six. Yeah, I'm uh, six. Nothing safe. Man, I've been preaching Boston. Last month or so, I feel like it'd be wrong if I just turn my backs and go with the champion, like you probably said, who's been there, done that. Let's go Boston in seven. Um, main reason why is because I think Eme, I, I talked about this last week or two weeks ago, Eme figured out a great rotation between Tice Horford and Robert Williams. That shit ain't working this series. Yeah, okay. well, on, the, on the boards, it will. Hell yeah. Why wouldn't it? You know what I mean? rebounds rebound. are about to get? The oh, come on. We're supposed, they're supposed to be scared to come on looting like that? It, they ain't got to be. They're going to be running after everybody else. I think he was out rebounding Jokic. And then Andrew Wiggins is uh, he can get boards. doing his role. He's leading the playoffs with 42 offensive rebounds. <clears throat> Anywho, fuck what these guys talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anywho, Boston is seven. I believe this, the Warriors met their maker. Not maker, but met their match. They're going to get outplayed here. I feel like the Warriors are about to get outplayed. I think that you they can switch up a lot of different matchups. They, they That's both fine. Can. But I don't think that they'll be as refreshed as the Warriors can be. The the I defensive like, I mean the, the bench is pretty deep. The bench is pretty deep on the Celtics too. All right. Payne Pritchard. And you who? keep talking shit about Payton Pritchard and look at what he's doing. 
producing. He ain't doing none of that against the fucking Warriors. We'll see. We will see. Let's see if he gets on the court. Kyle Anderson, Payne sure Pritchard, and then who? Kyle Anderson. Oh, uh, Derek what, White. Why I say Derek White. Yeah. Oh, damn. Spur- you think Spurs? But they kind of, they kind of, they kind of look Spurs. the same too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, Celtics in seven. Stevie. Yeah, I'm vehemently disagreeing with any Celtic pick, sir. Of course you are, you fucking Laker. Fan. It's not even about being a fucking Laker fan because, in actuality, bro. I don't see how the Celtics are the better team. I don't give a fuck about them taking all these other teams to a game seven because, yeah, that's nice, but at a, you're not going to keep just winning game sevens after game seven, bro, for I one. Like their back was always against the wall. Oh, they're, they're back up. against the wall, against Who? the chance. The, the this, Celtics? Uh. Bro. They're not the deeper team. I keep hearing motherfuckers say, oh, what's Clay going to do? Who's Clay going to defend? Bro, Clay, Clay didn't, didn't even. Anybody, regardless of that, Clay didn't even defend Luca or any of these other niggas before not, by himself. Not that much. It was mainly just like switches. But I see. But I this is what I'm and, saying. Yeah. They have the bodies to throw at Tatum and Brown too, though. Yeah. So they both have bodies. Yeah, they they can. They also both, have, both bodies, have bodies. But the Warriors gonna be throwing ten versus seven. Eight. Deeper. So. Actually, They're depending deeper. on what's going on with Robert Williams and Tice, because certain Dog. games you can play in certain and that's, games And you that's can't another play thing, him. too. Robert Williams, Tice, Horford, there's no way all three of them are about to be on the court at the same time in this series. They're about to get ran off the floor trying to chase these boys. It's not happening. I, I agree with you that they're going to be playing more there's like no, a red and gun style. There's n- they're going to have to have – yeah, Emei's going to have to come up with his own death lineup or whatever the fuck I, it is. I, I agree. Okay, I agree like, with you there. Yeah, like we there. said, they're going to have to do – yeah. You're for right. this series, right. it's going to be a lot of adjustments that need to be made. I, I give you that Not one. like we can give them credit. Yeah, they've made adjustments. This is a whole different. This is a whole different ball game, player. Yeah. They ain't been here before. It's a real three headed dragon right here. Yeah, well, and like yeah, it's three niggas. But even but okay, three if if Wiggins <laughs> if we if Wiggins want to wake up, it's done. If Looney want to get chip in someday, is like they have different guys outside of the top three that come in and help out. The same with Al Horford. The same with Derek White. The same with Grant Williams hitting 12 threes in a game, going for 27. The same with Marcus Smart. You're right. Smart they're just not deeper, though. But five. they're not deep. Yeah, Marcus they're Smart. They're the same, bro. Marcus Smart, I don't though. Know, I, don't know how you're not, I don't know how you can't see that they're not both equally as deep as each other. They are Both bags is crazy. They're not. Both benches are crazy. Mm. Both coaches, I take that back. I'm not are saying. Are we talking about that? We'll no, we, right we'll get okay, there. Cool. We can still get there, but, but I'm giving Warriors the nod on the bench. Hey, man. Because if, seven. all right, say if Jonathan Kaminga and Moody can get as many minutes as Pritchard. They won't. You saying that, but they if won't. they. You think that. Again, you can think that, but if they do, th- then that means the Warriors have got to be in good shape, bro, because there's no way they're just throwing two fucking rookies out there. And I, I'm willing to bet they can do as good as Pritchard can. Come on. He's not like he's show, he's been showing some shit this year, but he's not like miles ahead of them just cuz they rookies. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, you, hmm. you make a good point. But on I mean, to the next one. Oh, go ahead, get there. It's going to be close, but uh well, it's, it's, I got to I didn't say games, but uh, yeah, I'm I mean, saying yeah. Warriors in 6 too though. Like Warriors in 6. Okay. I see. I said Warriors and six for that Mavs series, and I almost sounded crazy because I was the only one standing <laughs> on that one. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, those Mavericks, there. they were not. They were not producing. Them boys. That's just another they reason. just weren't. No, the Mavericks just too. weren't a better team. They weren't hitting open shots. The Mavericks and they, really weren't hitting a they, lot of open they, shots. They they, they crumbled them. It's the only lights. so much you can do. Crumbled under the lights. Ime Adoka's impact on the Boston Celtics. I would just like to bring this man up because uh, two game sevens, we keep on mentioning it. Uh, it's definitely impressive to have not only the sweep in the beginning, yeah. those two game sevens, making those different types of, of inspirational talks, uh, handling shit off uh, on the bench, and then bringing in some energy in the next game. I think that this guy definitely, we've been given a lot of flowers to already. Um, so I would like to just ask here, is Ime the best coach in the finals this series? 
the best coach I mean, in the finals this series. I don't. We can give think him that. We can, yeah, we can give him that. All right. Well, this series, let's start with yes. you though. Get then. Go ahead then. This series, yeah, because like I said, your your very first year in the NBA, you swept you swept the uh, the Nets four zero. Fine, Steve Nash, Steve Nash, Steve Smash. Who gives a fuck? Steve you Kurt still went swept to the finals his first year too. And we and we gave. Steve Kerr, the same credit that I'm about to give Emil Doka, no? We said Steve Kerr no, was better than more experienced Mark, we, coaches when he did this? Because, like... What? Like, what, like I... Under, like, I... Ime, yes. All I but was just you're saying... saying he's, the, he's the better coach, not... I, I don't know as far as, like, schemes, this, that, and the other. He's the better coach this series, yeah. So who's the best coach in this series? Get then Ime or Steve Kerr? He said Ime. Ime. And then why? Uh, maybe like I said, like I I can't I keep preaching it. Ime figured it out between three centers on the rotation. There, he's the fresh voice that Boston has desperately been needing. Aside from Brad Stevens, who was fronted as a genius, but he still couldn't really tap into them boys like like they're playing now. Yeah, he was kind of fraudulent. Right? Yeah, of course he's gonna. Uh, he's just he's not a he's not an outspoken guy like I feel like Ime is. Ime can relate to the team better than Brad Stevens can. Well, I don't. I mean, yeah, I don't mm. see Brad Stevens as a relatable <laughs> guy on anything. That's just that's, that's yeah, just that. that's what I'm saying. So it's easier for Ime to connect and talk and to really get these boys going How, to play. Wait, as but opposed Steve to, Kerr can't do that. Yeah. No. That's. <laughs> No, no, not no to the answer. Like, yeah, he can, but I mean, Steve and he's Kerr, been doing it longer. I feel it, but Steve Kerr is just the face, the same way Steve Nash is just the face of Brooklyn. Like Steve Kerr had. What if we wanted to say Ime was just the face? Ime is not just the face though. Like Ime kind of elevated Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown to this level, really. Dog. He did. And Bro, Steve Steve, <clears throat> Steve Kerr had Steph, Dre, and Clay, and KD. All, all Ime has is Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and whoever the fuck else wants to pitch in that night. But he inherited this as well. He didn't build this. I'd say, so they, what you I'd say they're similar on that, too. Uh, that's, what, that's why I don't understand your argument. I'm like, everything you're saying is true or both guys. So, so, you're, so obviously you're going with Steve Kerr. Why Steve Kerr? Because Ime is only it's only his first year. We can't say he's a better head coach off one well, year. He did the same shit for Steve Kerr when he I first won. I did not. Won. You did, not me. I did not <laughs> say Steve Kerr was the best coach in the league because he got the first ring off. I did not. That's that's. I how didn't think way. he was because uh, I remember when Luke Walton came. And it, then he that too. This nigga too. won hella games with Steve Kerr on. What Steve Kerr coaching on autopilot or something? <laughs> because you have, I mean, it's e it's easier to not like really do shit or go far when you have Steph, Dre, Clay, and KD, as opposed to one dude who has two solidified dudes who absolutely have to play every Steve night. Steve Kerr didn't have KD all those years either, and you keep saying that too. I'm, okay, he, he... ooh, the Warriors had one bad season when Steve Kerr actually oh had to coach. God. Oh man, Clay's out for two years. Dre's barely fucking here, and Steph's here for a couple of games, but he got hurt in the end. When Steve Kerr really had to step up and coach, what happened? We cooked the fuck out of him. Now what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Steve <laughs> Kerr, Steve we Kerr's back. That. Steve Kerr's back in the finals. Oh man, he's a generational talent. Mark Jackson had no idea what he was doing. Who, <laughs> who made this switch up saying, your documenting though? Everything, everything this is crazy. Every this all sounds crazy. Every article and shit that I've been reading. Shit, but Stop just, reading fucking dumbass niggas <laughs> articles, bro, because this sounds crazy. <laughs> well, because how do you just because it sounds so truth, it sounds though. crazy. We, 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 Steven, were we not shitting on him after after KD left? I did not shit on Steve Kerr because KD left. 
I was ashamed. If the media did, the media did. But me personally, I have my own fucking brain. You're right. You're right. I'm not right, criticizing them my because bad. KD my left. Bad. Let me rephrase the question. Did the media not Steve shit on Steve Kerr after KD and everything looked like it fell apart? Especially the year. Man, they shit. The, they shit the whole Warriors organization. Right. I think so, they said it was Draymond and Bob Myers when he said yeah, that. Yeah. And Joe Lacob. Them niggas. They was yeah. talking about management people. Because they were saying management people were getting in between him and Draymond's little shit, too. Yeah. Let's speak about Ime a little bit more here. So, is Ime the best coach in the finals of the series? I'm going to say yes. And I feel like, kind of like how you guys are saying, they already had something already established, and they were like the cherry on top. Steve Kerr yeah. kind of threw in how important <clears throat> defense was on already a – unselfish type of team yeah. because of the culture that was already there. Yeah. Ime, like Gifton was saying, uh, really unlocked uh, Jason Tatum and uh, Jalen Brown into drive in, make sure that there's a pass out. Uh, let's be unselfish with the ball. That really unlocks a lot in the rest of your guys' bag. Um, so both of them were able to take advantage of that. And at the same time, though, they have that amazing defense that really uh, pushed Jason Tatum to taking up on the best dude on the other side of the court. Became a two-way player. Um, he was already a good defender. Marcus Smart is a defensive player of the year. You know how that kind of goes and how we feel about that already. Uh, but ultimately, he got it. Uh, so, you have Robert Williams, Grant Williams, just nasty pit bull type of dude, just being able to take on the strongest dude on the other side, no matter how tall, how much taller they are on him. So, I think he inspires these guys a lot different than kind of Steve <laughs> Kerr can. Uh, I, I would take, like, if I had a coach that I needed to coach my team and needed to inspire them in a different type of way, I'd take his inspiration over Steve Kerr's. I feel like he really like does take advantage of like already set situations and he adds to it. I'm not saying he doesn't add to it, but he may definitely no, I can see that. I think brought out a new potential. <coughs> Steve Kerr was just kinda like let's make let's continue to make the right play. Let me be part of this already made culture. So if I wanted a, somebody to coach my team right then and there, I'd pick Ime. Uh let me look at this stuff real quick. He regular season points per game, 110. They were scoring 100 points per game. So 10-point difference. Wait, who? The Heat. Okay. From regular season to the postseason against these guys. The Bucks regular season points per game, 116. Celtics, when they played them, 98. So they're in these really big dog fights. The Nets weren't so bad. It was like a four-point differential. But... Still saying they knocked out four points and they were also like the closest games out of all of them, even though they only played four games. <clears throat> so, uh, I would definitely say that he's a really big part in making all these different transitions. Uh, the different what, what what do you want to call them? Like, uh, just throughout as the series goes longer, I think that he brings more out of his team. And uh, Steve Kerr, he can make there you go that word adjustments. Oh, but to the way that Ime can, I don't think that that can happen. The only thing that I would say is the interchangeable part. What what were you saying? You're saying a man who's won numerous championships can't make as many adjustments, though? I don't think he made that many adjustments in the championship that he lost and the other championships that he won, he had KD. I feel like we need to give Ime more than a year to just say he's better, though. That's, again, he's he's, he's doing all this this year, but, okay, he needs a more of a track record than one year. So I'm saying, in my pro- you're talking about a lot about personal preference earlier. If I was having a team right now, just made I'm up, not saying, I'm saying I'd take that. Him. So that's not, why it's an interesting topic, because I'd take the other guy because right realistic- Even though the other guy's no. uh, portfolio is better, right? Yeah, like. But that's why I pick the other guy. Like, for me, because based on the question, because the question is talking about legacy, not in a vacuum, so to speak. That's what it's, that's what it's more so like. Yeah, like, okay. I, I would say in, in a I, vacuum, I'm saying in this I can final underst- series. Yeah, okay. I can, I can understand anyone who says if you, like, if you're not taking resumes and all that other shit, like, I'm not killing anyone saying they would take Ime. But if you're saying looking at resumes and all this other shit. There's no argument for Ime because he doesn't have enough yet. But when you're really. talking about resumes, I took a resume from Steve Kerr way back then 
and I compared it to like different types of ways that they were in their role and what they actually serve to their team. So a lot of the stuff that Ime's playing right now might be heightened because it is it is his first year. Am I saying he's going to be better than Steve Kerr in another four years? Man, I can't say that right now. No. He needs to at least get one more. But I'm talking about in this series right now, Do I who do I feel like is the best coach? Mostly a coach is to inspire and to put people in the best positions to win. Who do I feel like can do that right now? The Celtics just a little bit more because I think it's also it might be a detriment to how deep they are on the coaching side because you might be able to be too cute at certain points. Like, let's just say this much. The Warriors, when they were coming back in that game that the Mavericks actually won, they're playing all their bench players, yeah. and they were able to do that. Yeah. And then they started putting in their starters because it got a little close, they, and then it <laughs> fucked everything up. They didn't really. They made it into a, a, an eight-point game. The Mavs started, like honestly, bro, the Mavs so. put their starters in before the Warriors did that they game. They had their starters honestly. already out. Mm-hmm. And they and then they put Luka back in, too, because they had other starters in. I'm just saying. That was... That he... It, the way that he does that things... That quarter didn't start with starters. That's that's just... Like, both sides started that quarter with bench players, but the Warriors bench kept rolling, and the Mavs slowly started shuffling starters back in until they had to get Luka. Yeah. The Warriors were way later in the clock when they started really doing those switches, bro. I feel it. But we are at, like, the 50-minute mark, so we'll get into... The oh Steve my God. Kerr effect <laughs> on the Golden State Warriors. So, uh, just a little intro here. You're speaking about Ime Doka a lot. We, t- we really dove into Steve Kerr, too, so this shouldn't take yeah. too long. But this is the Steve Kerr effect on the Golden State Warriors in December 2017. So, this was, of course, five years ago. Damn. Kerr admits on Bill Simmons' pod to stealing plays from Brad Stevens. Interesting enough, he used to coach the Celtics, so they might be using the same type of thing. But I've never really made a play up. This is him, Steve Kerr said. Uh, you just steal from other coaches. Brad Steven draws up great stuff. Dave Yeager or Joger. Dave um, Yeager. 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 Thank yeah. you. Uh, Kings, runs. Right? To- he's he was with them before, but I, I think he's somebody's assistant right now because I mm-hmm. saw him on someone's oh, assistant. Oh, Philly, bit. no. Maybe because I he had, I um, saw him on someone's bench and I was he, like, he's on this team. He had a mm-hmm. uh, cancer treatment. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, of course, Dave Yeager uh, runs really good stuff. That's what he was saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kerr then brings up a play and goes to share that he and Hoiberg got lunch over the summer <laughs> league. Over summer league, and That's Hoiberg told him, "I noticed you've been running uh, our play. Yeah, we call it Cyclone, so on and so forth." Uh, oh, is that elevators? I don't know. Uh, is that the version of elevators? I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, the, yeah, the league is about having a bunch of six, seven guys who can guard, switch on defense, <laughs> says Kerr. So, uh, we spoke about Ime. What do you think is Steve Kerr's biggest influence on this Warriors team right now? Based off of the information I kind of just told you, in that he takes and applies what works best. And then, of course, you have, like we were kind of mentioning, the depth in, in them, right? All you need is these well length players, a mm-hmm. little bit of energy, commitment, and then you have your two superstars, of course, already. Yeah. Or just the way that they can score and pass the ball on that side. It doesn't take that much to win when you're playing good defense, right? Yeah. So, I think the biggest thing, and I'll kind of answer it first, I guess you could say, is uh, the buy in that he's gotten. Mm-hmm. He's able to do that with a lot of players. Andrew Wiggins is one of them. Yeah. Um, and then I I really do like how the rookies are able to make an impact as well. Jordan Poole bought in, bro. Like Jordan Poole's a big one, but he was showing out too. I feel like, and he was also a first round pick. But he had to figure it out. He had to figure it out, dog. Mm -hmm. Well, he made him body. Especially when Clay came back, he had to figure it out. That part, and he has to work himself off the bench too. When he seems to have the potential of a starter, right? No, he definitely does, bro. Exactly. So I feel like the biggest influence that Steve Kerr would have on this team is uh, having them buy in. He's a big contributor well, into everything that I'll we were talking about one, with Draymond Green. I'll say this one. He is a yes, starter if Clay is not on the team, probably. Bro. Yeah, facts. Yeah. For sure, it would be, be Steph, Jordan Poole, Wiggins, Drake. Man, when yeah. they had Steph coming off the bench for that little bit. Shit was insane, bro. 
Jordan Poole is starting. See, that's what's so the bad. Nuggets, that's what's the so Nuggets, bad. the Nuggets looked like. Oh, oh fuck! My what do we do? God. What do we do, <laughs> bro? The whole time the Warriors is just like, <laughs> just laughing. <laughs> just laughing. Like, boy, about the fuck y'all. <laughs> the Nuggets did, yeah. I, uh, no, the Nuggets, yeah. yeah. That that was kind of sad because they were like, oh yeah, niggas thought Steph wasn't gonna be. Like, I don't know. I guess they thought he was going to play like a six-man off the bench, too, and Jordan Poole was going to be... I don't know what the fuck they thought. But the moment Steph and Cl- Jordan Poole were both being demons on the three, bro, yeah. it was. <laughs> what do you think his biggest influence is on this game? Who? Uh, Steve Kerr. He spoke Steve a lot of uh, a lot of great things about him as well uh, mm. just before this. So, Honestly, what do you think the biggest thing? I feel thing like he's able to... Honestly, I feel like he's able to keep them grounded in different, not this, like, I'm not trying to say the same way as that Draymond does, but, like, more from, yeah. like, a wisdom and just a knowledgeable perspective type shit, bro. Because realistically, they can come to him and ask him about situations, too, because he was a player as well. And shit, this, we, I mean, we don't really, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying no one says this much, but shit, bro, Steve Kerr is still played with some teams and players that like are hall of fame mm-hmm. a- level he was a spur a lot of influence. he was with jordan bro he's he's been around he's been around so at this point Steve there's the de- there's definitely things that he can give them insight about and even from other minds <laughs> and people that are considered legendary, bro. Like, mm-hmm. he can give them that type of insight and help his team however he sees fit. And that's like a leg up, bro. And that is just something that not every coach has. Because, I mean, yes, they're player coaches, but even to the level of success that Steve Kerr is able to see as a player, not all the guys did that either, bro. Like, I feel yeah, that. That's a fact. Uh, Githin, do you have anything to say on this, or you want to get into the Kyler Murray one? Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get into the Kyler Murray. I, okay, wait. One thing I do want to apply, though. He's I back. think you had said it. Uh, fuck what? you. One thing you had uh, you had mentioned earlier. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, my, I must have heard something else, bro. I'm sorry. I take that back. Yeah, I was Any, like, what did I say? I thought you said something about like me being a, a Cardinal fan, but I, I heard you too fast. My bad, dog. I take that back. I mean, I didn't... Nothing to say. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. My bad. I heard, I heard something completely different. My bad. Good, bro. Anyways, anyways, I think what you had said was um, the way that Steve Kerr is able to like take something that didn't really apply to his team and implement it. So now that's something that they're always following, whether it's a play, uh, buying into something. We're going to play through this guy through the third third quarter, fourth quarter. Yeah. We're going to play through this guy through the third, fourth quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. We're going to deal with Drake. You know what I'm saying? It's it's his ability to uh, adapt. Yeah. That's yeah. what makes Steve Kerr so great. And, yeah, this man be, I mean, we can't say he be dealing with Draymond, but this man be dealing with Draymond, bro. <laughs> he doesn't. He, yeah. he doesn't. He don't. Because... I ain't gonna hold you. I'd be mad as fuck if every time something controversial happened and Draymond's on the pod talking about it the next day. I'd be mad as fuck. Hey, you're right. You're supposed to keep that in the locker You're right, room, but sometimes oh, it's Steve Kirby the, on the side. I don't side remember him ever too. talking about his own team though. No, the not past not teams. in his own no. team, but like there is the you remember the flagrant foul yeah, that happened? He did that. What are you though, t- what that, that chill was out, pretty, bro? Chill out. That chill out. That's a, that's a little too yeah. much. That's a little too much. Nigga didn't even have his NBA interview that night, exactly. bro. He went to- <laughs> <laughs> crazy. And all then right. even when he got ejected, and he's all clapping at the fence, like, bro, just walk that, out, bro. bro. Just storm out. That was very Antonio Brown esque. Yeah, <laughs> that reminded me of New York Jets game. <laughs> just storm out, bro. Just walk. Just storm out. Stomp your feet back that way. Anyway, Rob, Kyler Murray. Kyle Murray at the Cardinals OTAs will practice for the first time this offseason. K1. Uh, the main question here, uh, because I feel like okay, Kyle Murray uh, is only back because he would start to get fined uh, a lot of money, and he cares about his money, it seems like, especially if it's not no, seeming I'm like he's here. getting the same <laughs> type of contract that he uh, was thinking about getting in the first place here. Uh, so... With that being said, is Kyler Murray the QB you want to have in this division? Not be not to compare him to other quarterbacks necessarily, 
But in this division, you gotta gotta be truthful because the division got stacked. Yeah, stacked. Stacked. Well, not, their division got stacked. Well, not necessarily. We lost Russell Wilson, and then um, you who's gained the other team? Drew Locke. And then uh, and aside from him, yeah, you saw Jimmy G or <laughs> uh, Trey Say Lance, what you want about depending Jim- on what Trey hey, Lance is. God, I wonder what's gonna happen over there. Yeah, but um. It got worse, bro. It it, it did. I think um <laughs> that shit didn't get better. What the fuck? Did you guys just hear yourself? I didn't. What I say? Did did somebody say this division got better? He said that. I said, is this a QB you want to have in this division? Yes. This division yes. <laughs> yes, you do. With Drew Locke and Trey Lance versus Jimmy G with all that uncertainty, yeah, you're okay. Yeah, depending on who's playing that. All right, day, so yeah. so then you're giving him his money. Yeah. Even though in the second half he hasn't done well and he's also been injured. Get a fucking better O-line. True. That you, shit you, you sucks. You seen there. how he was running from Aaron Donald in that playoff game, bro? Yeah. That wasn't no that wasn't <laughs> running for his life. Yeah, bro, that wasn't no mistake. But that's Aaron they, Donald, they were bro. getting e- Exactly. It Anybody. wasn't a mistake because like I said, them boys on that line were getting thrown. You you they, I don't know. They, you think you think his line was doing better than Cincinnati line did? Cause they was getting tossed around too. Cincinnati was getting tossed. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think. That, I think Joe still might have got more points. Yeah, Joe got more points than Kyler. So you yeah. think that <laughs> Joe won a game? Did he get sacked nine times well, in the game? But he didn't. He. Didn't, I'm saying against yeah. the Rams though. But oh, yeah. okay, okay. So but you're yeah, saying though he still did better though. But we're all paying him. Is that is that what you're saying? Like you would pay him for this? Divi- I think we're saying based off this division, yeah. Yeah, right. He would I've still be the second. Uh, you could still, he'd be the second best by some, default. First, and sometimes. he can compete. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He he has a ceiling to be the best. Mm-hmm. I've been a Kyler Murray advocate since the start of the show. So hey, by all means, go get your bag, bro. Yeah. Do you think that this man? You already had two people. One led you to a to a Super Bowl, and one won a Super Bowl in his first year in this division. Do you think that Kyle Murray is a Super Bowl uh, candidate, like somebody that can bring their team to the Super Bowl? All right, get to you first. If they fix that line, yeah. Actually, oh, fuck. DeAndre Hopkins is suspended for the De- first time. Yeah, DeAndre Hopkins is suspended. You'll get to see um, what he is. Ooh. Yeah. Without him. You know what, bro? I mean, we I have think, before. I, I, <sighs> yeah. You know what? I think I'm going to say no. I hate, to, I hate to say that. I don't think he's a Super Bowl. I think this guy's going to get me to the Super Bowl. I'm going to say no. Okay. No. Nah. The NFC is kind of wide open except for uh, Aaron Aaron Rodgers and, and your boy. I don't even know. Oh, if yeah. Taking the mud Stafford with the <laughs> oh, ring on man. it. He's, how many rushing touchdowns did he have? Bro, it doesn't matter when you got a ring yeah, on you, bitch. Oh, all right, man. <laughs> but, yeah, um... I, I think I'm going to say no, and I think, one, I think not having D-Hop the first six games is really going to fuck with him. Two, you still don't really have a good O-line like that. That's also going to be another thing. And then three. Oh, that's, just, that's just his one year. Yeah, it's still kind of. The, the their line could be better. Not, their yeah, O-line line can be better. by no means elite or good. It's I don't, average. You don't need. I need a. I need a good line. I don't need an elite line. So, I need so a good So what's wrong line. with investing into a two way dynamic type of QB then? What What are we waiting for? That's all, you. As I'm saying, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. What, like, what are we? What are we? What are we, we should we invest for? in them. Nothing's wrong with it. But yeah. I'm saying honestly, if you want to invest in them, then you should on. You should really truly believe that this man is a, is a Super Bowl quarterback. We've seen Super Bowl quarterbacks that are honestly less than him. So it's kind of like what you build around him. Nick Foles. But the thing is, is that if you don't have the money to build around him, Man. that's on a different. That's a different story. This does give him a timetable, and to really see what he needs. Yeah. I don't know. I think the Cardinals are being definitely uh, stingy. Sure, to have this guy paid. For sure. Like, I who agree. else are you gonna have? That's gonna be better than this man. And he maybe, has been yeah, trying that's to get I'm better. Every like, year. Maybe they must know some shit we don't yeah, know exactly. about that quarterback they, room. Because I'm like, what the they, fuck? They moved off ah. of Josh Rosen and somebody else to get him. No, Josh uh, yeah, they spent a, a lot of draft capital. I would get that, like Josh just Rosen's value. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, he is a bum. But I'm just saying, if you trade up to get the number one QB and you still didn't pay him, what's going on? Well, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, you look stupid. So it has to be a lot then. More than <clears throat> more than something that we're seeing. More than the three things I the, mentioned, yeah. On the but, field. Uh, uh who, yeah. everybody answer? Was it would that, have to be, yeah. huh? Did they were saying it? stuff about his leadership, but I didn't think it was that much they of a big he, deal. No, nah, but they said he was immature, which is kind of a a huge thing in the NFL, I would say, more than like any other sport. Yeah. Um But yeah. You. Is that it? No, we, we got the high on hypotheticals, a segment. Oh, this is some new shit. Right here. Oh. Is it's it? just a it's just an easy hypothetical. Okay. We get to talk about whatever we want. Alright. Uh it's a little opinion about something that's kind of out of nowhere, but definitely something. That should be fun. Shit. We bring you a hypothetical and you bring your opinion. <laughs> okay. That's how we do high on hypotheticals. Okay. Who would you rather build around in today's NBA? <clears throat> Magic Johnson or Shaquille O'Neal Gifton? You're the hype guy. Who do you want on this? Oh, man. You're building uh, around him. Building around him. Man. I think I'd take Magic because Magic could get himself and everybody else going. Like and it's crazy because uh like a couple weeks ago I said dominance over skill, mm. uh but when you got a guy like Magic who has the skill to get everybody else going and the dominance to get himself going, Ooh. I'll take Magic over I'll take Magic over Shaq any day for sure. Man, yeah, I'll answer this before you can because uh, you're the Lakers fan. These are two uh, really nice Lakers. Yeah. Just to say that much. Uh, for me, I think. Kind of like how you were saying. I didn't even think about that. Like, it's either skill or dominance. I would say it depends on what I'm looking for. Right. If I'm trying to build right now today, am I trying to win right now? Because mm-hmm. then I'd pick Shaq. Mm-hmm. But if I'm trying to win... Man, who are you picking? Stop with this extra <laughs> shit. Nah. Come on. It's I'll one pick, or the other. I'll let him get off. I know, let but you over it. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm let just playing. Let him talk real quick. That's great. I know, but like... But Shaq went down <laughs> real quick. Wait, what you say? Shaq went down? Yeah, Shaq wasn't that dominant for a long period of... Oh, like, after the game, it was... That like, was... Magic Johnson was, was dominant for a way longer period of time than him and could have had more if he didn't have all that other shit. So what I was trying to say is that there's a little bit of longevity brought into this. Mm-hmm. So if it's talking about right now, right now, I'm going to tip pick Shaq at his prime because I picked dominance over skill in the fact that there when there's something that... You can't game a game plan around because if you could just shut down Magic, then the rest of your team is not as great as they actually were. With Shaq, you could try to double team him, triple team him. He's gonna get what he wants magically. Everybody else is gonna get better because of this man is just is that great. Yeah. So depending on what I want, like if I want longevity and I can build around him for a long time, I pick Magic. But if it's I'm trying to build rebuild today in today's NBA, I don't really think that really matters just because. We've seen like other ways of Magic Johnson, and him by himself can't do it. But if you have Shaq by himself, like unanswerable situation, talking about prime on both ends, that boy nasty. So I did. De- I think I definitely take a Shaq and build around him. I feel like mm. you already got your number one in a lot of different ways. Magic, you try to look for a number one scorer. It feels like still with him in today's NBA. Mm. Whereas Shaq is already your number one, so it doesn't take that much to build around him. Uh, your turn there, Steven. I'm picking Shaq, too. I don't even see how this is a hard choice because, I mean, I'm picking Shaq, and with Shaq, I can find a, another number one, technically. Like, what the fuck? Kobe was a number one, bro. Like, let's keep it a thousand. That's two number ones together, and that's why they were so fucking unstoppable. So you're are you picking Shaq and Kobe over Magic and Kobe? Hell yeah. Oof. That know, is man, pretty That's crazy. a hell of a backcourt to have Magic and Kobe. I don't disagree, that's, but... That's, that'd be bro, that's crazy. Steph and Clay on steroids. Bruh. Times three. <laughs> I, I hear bro, you. Magic and Kobe will Magic be Magic and Kobe nuts. would be fucking crazy, bro. You're telling... Look, because of how good it might look at certain points, you're right. I hear you. I'm thinking about dubs, bro. I don't care. I know That's these two Nick. Jokes. I know. Hold up, hold That's up. That's not what up. I'm saying. So we're, when we're talking about this hypothetical, both players are in their prime. So prime Kobe would not do better with Magic Johnson than with Shaq. How would he do better? 
I think he'd do better with, with Magic didn't Johnson didn't, just because I think his numbers, I think his individual numbers with Magic would probably be but better. Didn't, but, but didn't you guys try and bro, trade? What? But didn't you guys try and trade for Chris Paul, prime point guard? You Chris. wouldn't want to see Magic and Kobe together in their prime, killing shit. This is not changing my mind. Oh man. Yeah, Shaq and Kobe. I'm not saying that that wasn't crazy. Bro, and if you think Magic about it this way, and, bro, Magic and Kobe would be insane. What's a better duo than Shaq and Kobe? Probably nothing. Shaq and LeBron. I mean, no. What? No. Well, they were playing I at think different times. They're talking about just like straight duos. That oh, actually straight played. Duos, yeah, yeah, I think that What's actually played. Bro. Probably be Shaq and Kobe. Shaq and Kobe. Or maybe Dennis one, yeah. and uh, Jordan and Pippen. I mean, but that's because uh, nah, I think Shaq I'm still taking Shaq, Shaq and Kobe. I'm taking two v two. Yeah, I think I don't think nobody's two v two. Oh, I'm taking the other man's. You know what I'm saying? So MJ, I would pick Shaq in this in this aspect too, though. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, if it's two v two, uh huh, Pippen and Pippen and Jordan yeah. against, Shaq they and Kobe, have to double yeah. Shaq. Shaq and Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they can't okay, do yeah. anything. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that's that's easy. And a team aspect is a little bit different, but I, I still think you know, Shaq and Kobe go crazy. Like three p, two three p. That's what I'm saying. But three p in in a two v two setting, and I'm trying to build around you. Ooh, ooh. I don't know, man. That's crazy. But I definitely pick Shaq just because I feel like he's a true number one. That's it. Magic, make everybody better and stuff. But I, I feel like there's a lot of different players that do that in this league. And it's yeah. not the same as having that dominant player that comes out there and gets what he wants every night. Yeah. So that's how I see it. Yeah. Man. That's a nice one. That's it. Yeah. That is the episode. Drop me a Dom DeMarco. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Dom DeMarco. You picked Magic Johnson? Yeah, yeah. I did. Nice. You can't go wrong with either of these That's guys, That's what I'm man. saying. You can't go <sighs> either one, but I'm like, not saying it's... I don't think it's a bad choice. Yeah. I'm just picking Shaq for I, I, my own I preferences. Feel both answers aren't bad, but, yeah. man, hey, you can make something out of nothing with Magic, and hope, you can just win like, straight with Shaq. With, with Kobe and Shaq, I feel like I know more so what I'm going to expect because I have two guys that I know that can't be stopped. You already seen it though. That's different. You won't see these other hypotheticals. Well, like, it's, it's not. Different. It's not totally about different. like. Well, no, it's not even about seeing them together, so to speak. Because like, again, like if you, if we ask the question differently, it could. This could have given us different answers too. Like with regards to who the names were. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah, well, True, yeah. I, again, it's in today's NBA. That's like the only like context clue in today's yeah. NBA. Yeah, because and I feel like we've seen a couple Magic Johnson replicated, and, and that's another not thing. Real Magic Johnson, it's not course. like I would not pick Magic because I don't like Magic. I'm only saying it because the question is with Shaq. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is with Shaq, bro. But that is episode. That's 81. Drop me another Dom DeMarco real quick. Podcast. Yes, sir. Dom DeMarco. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead yes, and sir. shatter that like button. Bust down those comments. Shout out to the 109 subscribers I think we're at still now. Growing. 109 growing. still growing from the ground up. And as always, support to you. Chewing on nice, but... Yeah, good night, everybody. Ooh, that was a bar. Howdy.